Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. The Rotomout Podcast is an IBM production, and if you enjoyed this episode, you can also check out their other awesome shows like Shunya One, a show hosted by entrepreneur Shila Ditya Mukhopadhyay, which is essentially a roundtable discussion about all things tech in India. Hi, this is Sanjeev, and this is Tushar, and welcome to the Rotomout Podcast. Sanjeev, how are you doing today? Very good. How are you doing? I'm very wet, and it has nothing to do with you, thankfully. Hopefully not, and thankfully we are not in that category. No, we're not. It's a friendly, family-friendly kind of podcast. Okay. How was Goa? Goa was also very wet. Okay. Uh, but in a very nice way. Goa in the monsoons is is really something to behold, mm. and it's always nice when you're uh, flown there for free and put up in a nice hotel for free. Absolutely, and the Jeep Compass did not disappoint. The Jeep Compass did not disappoint. I know that uh, you also have a whole bunch of information. Yes. and uh, background information about the jeep compass uh, i was not privy to all that but so i got basically the after the uh, the plant visit where we got all the technical details about the mm. car this is the first time we got to touch and feel the car from the inside uh, and drive it we drove uh, oh i'd say couple of hundred kilometers over a okay. period of 20 or 4 hours and uh, i came back pretty impressed yeah because it is a very impressive car i remember having uh, you know been a part of the consultancy team that worked on uh, for the technical immersion and i remember seeing details about the car which were very impressive to start with and the car in itself in totality as a package the way it looks the interiors the kind of features they've put in and most importantly what all has gone into the building of the plant to manufacture this as we were told in the technical immersion is very very impressive i have still not driven the car so i don't know what how the car drives that is something you you will be able to give me better but from what i have been reading and everybody has been saying the same thing that if they get the price right jeep has a winner on hand do you concur so the price is the thing everybody is talking about it it it's literally a guessing game uh, each time there were something like five or six batches of journalists that actually went to go and drove this car uh, over the period of a week uh, or slightly you guys more. were given a very interesting trail and all as well to drive on isn't it yeah so we uh, it was a little bit weird but uh, i think we got a reasonable amount of time with so the car so tell me you guys were driving on the beach and you all went to a trail where all did you drive so the first day we we had the car uh, in the late afternoon early evening and it was essentially you know do what you want here's the car go find your trails uh, you guys have been to goa enough times figure it out okay uh, and there were two publications per car sharing which is typical typical yes so and, and you know most of us have been to goa for these things uh, quite a lot so everybody knew uh, where to go so i was with a, a couple of guys from motor octane and they had a standard place to shoot uh, which is a place called verna it's okay. in an industrial estate Lots of people shoot there. We've shot uh, Hondas there. We've shot uh, Q Audi Q3 right, there. Right, right, right. It's, it's you know it's it's just a, a nice big uh, rolling hills. Yeah, I hills, think I remember the location. Surface. You pro- you're probably familiar. Lots yeah, of people yeah. uh, shoot over there. So you took it over there. Nobody's around. There are these boys doing uh, photo vanity photo shoots and shit like that. Okay. So we we did uh, our basic shoots. Got got a lot of stuff out of the way because mm. the next day was a long drive, mm. about a hundred odd kilometers out to a, a wildlife sanctuary in South Goa, okay. past South Goa, on the way to Karwar. Okay. Okay. And um, Jeep had done some serious uh, work there. They put up an entire off-road trail. Okay. Uh, it's not easy to set up uh, off-road trails and maintain uh, uh, them. Are these the same people who are involved with Camp Jeep? Uh, I believe uh, the people that are involved in these camps and the boot camps and things like that in the US, they were flown down specifically to sort of okay. give their uh, input in this. So as a result, this has been a fairly expensive, you know, pricey event mm-hmm. that uh, Jeep has put up. But the advantage of this was that. there is no doubt now about the jeep compasses off road capability okay you see uh, nowadays in in this price bracket and beyond there's a lot of suvs coming out right right but but they'll they'll typically be pitching themselves as you know luxury suvs and what kind of features they have and things like that and even if they have all wheel drive four wheel drive whatever that's not very often a focus area hmm. it it was a surprise when we were at the tata hexa press drive also right, right. And, and they took us uh, around a slight uh, off road track and that was you know that was genuinely a, surprising no no and that was genuinely a very that was a good track I yeah. mean, they took us why they didn't let us drive it yeah this Because one this one is a little more uh, little more hardcore it's inside a wildlife sanctuary there are rocks there are so water crossings so was this created or was this the track was created okay. uh, obviously this is in a wildlife sanctuary so there is a limit to what you can do mm. but 
obviously it was recce they they figured out what sort of terrain uh, you know best demonstrates the right. kind of stuff that the right. jeep compass can do so we, we did little water crossings we did lots of mud hmm. um, you know inclines declines things like that and generally the feeling we got is this jeep compass is it feels indestructible uh, in these conditions these were not super hardcore i mean there was not you know you weren't balancing three mm-hmm. wheels on rocks and stuff like mm-hmm. that the crazy stuff that you see in the jeep events in the moab right. desert it wasn't like that but it was it was pretty rainy slushy um uh, lots of mud slinging around lots of slippery conditions mm-hmm. and the compass uh, handled it all flawlessly we were driving of course the top end uh, 4x4 models mm-hmm. so we didn't really need to do anything the nice thing about the jeep is that I think they've got the package right, you know. You know, I agree. it's there's not too much stuff mm. in it. There's not gizmos all over the place. For example, it's got a traditional uh, hatch in the back. Mm. You lift it with a button and you push it back down mm. uh, to close it. Other more fancy uh, SUVs like the VW T1 mm-hmm. that uh, I drove um, recently. Right. That's got uh, one of those uh, power tailgates where mm. you know you can wave your uh, toe mm. under the rear bumper and it uh, yeah jeep doesn't up. have all those gimmicks so it doesn't have those gimmicks but i think they've put a, a decent package together uh, in this top end model i wouldn't say it's bare it's simple it's got a decent amount of stuff it's got your uh, smartphone connectivity it's got a smaller touch screen mm. i think it's a 7 inch touch screen but it's got smartphone connectivity mm. it's got a usb at the back it's got rear ac vents um it's got leather all over the place you know on the door on the dashboard things like that it feels nice it feels reasonably premium uh but the i think the core of this vehicle has to be the engine the transmission and most of all the suspension i agree because see uh, as i told you i was privy to because on, on a consultancy project we were privy to how the whole jeep compass was put into play and in that i saw firstly the amount of uh, technology that has gone into the process of building the compass that itself gives you an idea and gives you an idea about the intent of fca india as to how they want to make it successful since it is the first made in india jeep that's going to be exported yeah. abroad so that's again a big thing for them yeah. and at that point when i spoke to the tech people there and they were telling us that the jeep compass has got they have put so much inside the car but they have still kept it true to the character of the jeep the jeep is an outdoorish vehicle it is not a luxury suv it's meant for people who enjoy that kind of drive and i had attended one of the camp jeep events at film city that didn't have the compass that had the other two models that again the trail the way it was conducted gives you a very clear indication of how serious jeep is about its off road pedigree yeah and the people that conducted it they are people out of chandigarh they did a brilliant job at that So Jeep is very very clear in one thing that this is a car that people who love off-roading are going to buy people who love going for long drives this is not going to be bracketed and pitted against any of the other SUVs it will be eventually because of the pricing and various other parameters but like you said I completely get that because it's not they don't put a lot inside the car one area of worry amongst all the auto journals was that what will the interiors be like because at the technical immersion people were not privy to that Yes. But now that you're saying it looks plush and I know it looks good. So I think overall they've done a good job now it all comes down to the pricing. Yeah. I think uh, there's no doubt that this is an off-road capable vehicle and over a period of time thanks to the kind of reviews that all the journalists will put out mm. as well as whatever experiences they are able to offer customers test drives etc i think people will get that sense that this is an enthusiast class uh, vehicle absolutely and and as you might know fiat cars in general tend to sort of mm. uh, inspire this kind of uh, fan following I, i mean i was driving along with a whole bunch of these uh, fiat fans and you know i'm i wouldn't count myself as uh, one of them because i've never owned a fiat but they're quite passionate about it and i see this jeep compass also sort of inspiring that level of passion i think it'll become an enthusiast class uh, vehicle yeah and i think that is what jeep is going towards also because jeep has has a community build up like even i would say the equivalent of uh, something like what the harley does to motorcycles jeep falls in that kind of bracket and i remember we were being told that one of the camp jeep events was held in the run of kutch so i think they have a common dealer for harley and jeep so there are a lot of these guys who came you know rode up for this event on harleys and so he the people in jeep were telling me that it was so phenomenal to look at because when you have guys turning up in harleys and then they drive jeeps it's just a natural fit it's a very american car in its true character sure 
So I think they are going after the enthusiast class. I think you're absolutely right. They are going after that community and they're very focused about it. Right. Now for the specifications, we were driving the 2 liter diesel. Right. Uh, it's got a 170 odd mm. horsepower. It's got 350 newton meters of yes. torque. Uh, very nice, very healthy engine. This is a multi-jet engine yes. that if our uh, audience might not know um, or the enthusiasts will, that the Fiat multi-jet series of engines is very, very prolific and popular in India. Absolutely. Your, uh, Tata's use them, Fiat's use them, Maruti's use a version of them the premier rio uses a version of them uh, the chevy beat the erstwhile chevy beat uses a, a and version they're, of they're them. extremely good reliable powerful engines exactly they're refined reliable and just generally bulletproof that's why so many people use mm. them so this is a two liter uh, version and i was quite impressed it's a quiet engine it's, mm. it's quite refined it's quiet they've done a good job uh, in the inside of the cabin you know okay. so NVH levels noise harshness they've not worked there. very hard on that yeah and I'd say it works it, it shows it's a nice quiet uh, motor to run a nice quiet vehicle to be in absolutely uh, importantly uh the gearbox, uh, we drove the manual. Mm. Now, uh, we are still not sure what kind of combinations we are going to have. Mm. But what we were told is that... They, they didn't will, tell you about that? At the they told us the basics. So, for example, they told us that there will be three trims. So, okay. you know, there will be like a low, medium, high yeah, sort of yeah. trim level. Mm. There are two engines. We already know that there will mm. be a 1.4 litre petrol and a 2 litre diesel. I don't know when the petrol is coming. I think they're going to launch it along with the diesel next month. So this information wasn't given to you guys? No, this information was given to okay, us. Okay. So we know there's a 1.4 okay. and a 2. It's coming next month. Okay. We know there are three models. Mm. Um, we also know that there is a two-wheel drive and a four-wheel drive. Mm. Now, combined, they claim there will be 50 different configurations. I don't know how the math of that works, but they are claiming 50 different configurations. 50 different configurations based on... The based on these. Like I said, I don't think the math works out no, in my mind. Even it doesn't work out in my mind. Yeah. So, I, mean, I don't know how they're going okay. to uh, work it out. But I assume this was the top and this was the limited 4x4 manual version. Right. So, it's got all-wheel drive. Okay. Uh, which means that you don't need to switch into any kind of mode. You just keep it in auto and you go. Mm. If you're in slush and mud, you put it into mud mode right. and you just go. Mm. It's very clever uh, despite I think it doesn't have locking differentials and stuff but despite that it uses sort of um, clever bits of traction control and brakes different wheels no, no, it's a very clever car yeah so it gives you that kind of feel and that comfort mm. where you can just get through anything and it was really nice we had uh, I won't name actually I don't remember the name but there was one gentleman who was obviously not from the Biradri Okay. Uh, who was simply <laughs> all he was doing was basically flooring it full throttle on mud but that's so, not how you drive jeeps I know, that's not how you drive any car in yeah, the mud yeah yeah you so, don't <laughs> It's full throttle. So despite the electronics, this car was kind of weaving and sort of floating. It looked like he was driving on ice. It was ridiculous. And I've got this footage actually. This car, the wheels are furiously spinning. And it's kind of slowly kind of dangling and doing a pendulum and just passing <laughs> us. It was quite ridiculous. Anyway, but it, that's not the way you drive things 4x4. You've got to be sort of considered. No, but how does, I mean, the Jeep, the thing is with about Jeep was when I remember talking to them, even during the technical immersion, they were saying that they are very keen on they are very clear about the person who will buy the car. Yeah. So they are also very clear about the fact that this car is going to perform very well in any conditions. So like on regular road, highway drives and all, also it's going to be a very comfortable car to drive. So they have a, a very clear marketing pitch, uh, hmm. a demographic that they are targeting. Ah, you it's, shared something about that. I did. It's 90% male. Which uh, is absolutely right. 30 to 40 years old, married, has a family size of 3 okay. to 5. Three uh, to five. Three to five. So probably three kids. to five kids. I hope not. Okay. Uh, three to five would be one to three kids. Okay. And um, no, either three to five was without the couple. Yeah. And and typically targeting more of the business community. Sixty percent business community. Forty percent uh, employed. Um, and uh, most likely, most of them still have their hair, which is kind of pretty. No, but why me. does the hair? The hair is not. Uh, they had. They had. A, they had a very nice uh, model uh, listed near the table, and he had a man bun. They but had I a model of, listed means he was there. Know, like you know, there was a stock image of okay. a, of a guy of a fancy looking guy with a with a very trim beard and a man bun. So you and, can't buy it then. Uh, I can't. I have a nice beard, but the hair is a problem. So then, what? You're not buying the jeep unless I get a wig. <laughs> I think you should. I think I might. Yeah. It's an enthusiast class vehicle. I really liked it. Yeah. The important thing, and here's the key, I think, is that Jeep is going to get the package right. See, whatever it is, uh, for me, the deal makers of this vehicle are the engine, the gearbox, and the suspension. Mm. Whether it's two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, let's face it, I'm not going out in the mud. And you No, know, you're not going to do that. Yeah, Nobody's yeah. going to do even, that. Even if I've got a two-wheel drive, the fact is that we've got this frequency-sensitive damping. This right. is, a, this is right. a, the Jeep was very clear uh, in mentioning to us that they've actually spent 
a hmm. lot of money uh, in this suspension. No, Suspe- they have spent a lot. Suspension of money. is not is yeah. not a cheap item. People yeah. think that it's just springs. No, it's uh, not. But it's not. Uh, suspension is a very ex- can can be a very expensive piece of kit. So they actually spent extra money to put this frequency selective, right. c- frequency sensitive damping hmm. uh, in the Jeep uh, Compass. What this basically does is that whether you're going over rumble strips or you're going over large potholes or bumps, the car will react. in an appropriate way yeah because that is one of the features that they even highlighted in the emotion and yeah. that i know is one of their most important features yeah and this is not a fancy schmancy range rover style active no. pneumatic system no. which can raise and lower the car no. and things like that this is a purely mechanical system but it works really well we we were thrashing it about in the mud on the stones uh, on bad roads on good roads and and it it's great it's it's got a really nice ride quality there is a little bit of body roll so thoda okay. sa matak matak hota hai but it's really if i had to consider that a trade off i would take it any day of the week okay so in completing what we are saying uh, would you buy the compass that's the good thing you Now, don't have the hair but i don't have the hair i know but from all the guesses we are talking about a 17 to 23 lakh rupee range that's my estimate really uh, i think that's a damn good price i think if they can get a low end model and the low end model will not look as fancy as you might have seen in the I photos know, I know. like it may not have the yeah. the blacked out roof yeah, that's an yeah. option pack it will probably come with steel wheels But boss, मेरे लिए it is the suspension, the engine and the gearbox. मत दे मेरे को फोर बाई फोर जो यू वो सस्पेंशन दे मेरे को वो इंजन और गियर बॉक्स दे एंड आई एम सॉर्टेड बॉस इफ यू कैन गिव मी दैट फॉर सेवेंटीन एटीन लैक रुपीज दैट्स अ बाय मैन नो आई वुड ऑल्सो बाय द का आई वुड बाय द का बिकॉज या दिस इज वन ऑफ द बिकॉज आई हैव ड्रिवेन ऑफ यू जीप्स abroad yeah. so i remember driving them i had great fun driving them i've always right. liked the jeep yeah. and i think at this price i think jeep if they get their distribution package together which i'm sure they will if they get it together they have a winner on hands yeah i think i can safely say this is the best car to come out of their stable so far yeah, i probably agree yeah. so you think we should uh, keep aside some of the crores of rupees that we're making on this podcast Absolutely. and buy a couple of jeeps 100% why a couple we'll buy a few hundred ourselves take care sorted we are so, sorted okay. so we we'll catch you after the break okay I was Tantrik Steve from Hansraj College Delhi performing at IIT Bombay's Mood Indigo. Just like them there's a lot of new talent and art coming out of colleges all across India but unfortunately most of this goes completely unnoticed or ignored. To fix this we started atkt.in. Hi, I'm Ankur. I'm a musician and a rapper and I found that one of the best things about being an artist myself is finding new talent. Through atkt.in Tanya my colleague who's a dancer and a whole team really is putting all of our efforts into discovering and promoting all the coolest talent that's coming out of colleges all across India and this goes up on our website our social media TV radio and of course this podcast with IVM make sure you go to our website support the talent with your likes your shares your comments all of that really matters go ahead check it out adkt.it Welcome back to Shar. Thank you Sanjeev. Why you so suddenly energy is dropped? Oh okay. Sorry. <laughs> Acha you are now trying to keep your energy low. Yeah, I'm trying to keep my energy low. That feedback I got uh, <laughs> from our colleague was that What was the feedback? The feedback was that when I'm high energy it seems contrived, but when I'm low energy and deadpan that's my shtick. So I should stick to that. Stick so, to the shtick. So shake. you basically have to be put up. Or, so if you if you got drips in your system and all then you're normal. Then I'm normal. Okay. That's my normal thing. cool so another launch that happened recently was the triumph street triple 765 yes the 765 is finally here yeah so you like the bike i think it's hard to not like this bike hmm. uh, to just to give you a background the street triple is basically you have to give a background to everything no i have to yaar i mean everybody who is listening to the podcast is is not necessarily i mean there's my vast uh, contingent of female fans they might not know everything about sport bike you have female fans uh, i have at least 3 okay okay carry on huh? yeah so street triple street triple is a pretty popular bike worldwide it always has been uh, mm. and it's been soldiering on for quite some time they've had lots of uh, you know uh, race versions and you know fancy versions with more equipment but that is how every company does it na to prolong the life of a particular model yeah pretty much and and triumph has had a really good run with this bike and with the 765 you know you can tell that they they've not seen a great deal of reason to change things up when things are working so well You're right so um as you might have noticed with a lot of other uh, manufacturers particularly in motorcycles 
lots of capacities have gone up so you know where you had like like in the ducatis you had a 899 panigal mm. now it's a 959 panigal so there have been little adjustments of similarly like the bajaj pulsar it started at 150 cc no but that's different here here what we're talking about is the euro 4 uh, emission ah, norms okay okay so with euro 4 what's happened is it's become much tougher much stricter mm. so you may have noticed that all these new latest super bikes have slightly different exhausts slightly worse looking exhaust from uh, previous models and things like that and mm. they've all gone up a little bit like 100 200 cc mm. in capacity so basically they've done that because they need to provide the same level of performance while maintaining this strict emission uh, no that's norm. true what i was gave what i was trying to say was that uh, like you said they have gone through so many iterations and they've kept on extending it with various versions very much like any company best example i could think of was bajaj with the pulsar mm. they started with the pulsar and now you have pulsars that started 150 180 and now they've gone to 220 400 no 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 that's not that's not the case so basically the 675 has become the 765 not because they had to make it far okay. better thank you professor <laughs> yes you've been schooled i have been schooled so the 675 has become the 765 not because they wanted to make it a hell of a lot better or they desperately needed more power it does make power this power. has come from the horse's mouth now you got info no 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 absolutely not this is all my gyan You are just giving gyan for the heck of it. That's what I do. Okay, ha. Huh. You said I I've built a long storied career of not making any money out of giving gyan. Okay, ha, huh. you were saying. So I was saying. Now Shall I, I understood to- why they replaced it. Yeah, so they replaced it because Euro four. Okay. They needed to uh, comply with stricter emission norms, so okay. they had to make the engine bigger. Okay. So now the six seven five cc is now the seven six five cc. It yeah. does make uh, more power. They had to. I mean, they can't just make the engine bigger and give you the same power. It'll, it will be a marketing disaster. I know one disaster. manufacturer who does that. Okay. Yeah, you want to mention that? No, I no? don't want to. Okay, okay. fine. Yeah, so uh, it makes more power. It's a hundred and thirteen PS now. The previous one was a hundred and six PS, or so we thought. Yeah, I, I, that one has read about, one has heard enough yeah. controversy about. You remember that whole outrage? Yes, so I remember the whole outrage. But bas- then basically, everybody bought the street triple, the six seven five street triple, thinking, "Arey, sahi hai, mere ko ek so panch horsepower ka gadi mil raha hai." <laughs> But actually, it was much much lower. It was, I don't know, some figures say it was seventy one PS, some people say it was seventy nine PS, some people say it was eighty five PS. But then point is that you weren't getting north of hundred horsepower. Of course, everybody got super angry and shit like that. And the company handled it. They gave them remaps and they gave them exhaust for cheap plates. to get them up to speed but this one doesn't need all that stuff it's an honest 113 horsepower so i think it's 79 newton meters of torque hmm pretty healthy uh, vehicle what we will get in india is only the s model yeah that always happens we don't get all the models yeah so the other models might come but hmm. right now we are getting the basic s model hmm but even the basic s model is uh, a few steps ahead of what's what was available earlier i agree i agree because uh, what i've been reading about this bike is that it's going to be probably the best in the price segment and um, and it's going to set a benchmark as most triumphs usually do yeah. so you know they are like they're very very good so i think and at the price at 8.5 lakhs x showroom hmm. you're getting a lot of features for your money what do you think uh definitely uh, so 8 and 1/2 lakhs is about 51000 rupees more than the previous model mm. uh but for that bump in price you get a bike that's lighter lighter is always good yeah obviously you, you get more power mm. uh, a little more power but it's there more mm. power uh you get uh, abs as a standard of course you right. get a uh, ride by wire and traction control which is nice I but mean, isn't tra- traction control now a very common thing in most of these high end bikes it is absolutely and the thing is that as technology is advancing as the norms are getting a uh, tighter and tighter of course now in europe for example you can't sell a bike without abs so that's mm. going to be there mm. i think eventually it'll come to that point with traction control as well i don't think it is uh, right now but the fact that you've got ride by wire throttle right ride by wire throttle has impacts on emissions and 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 the way Absolutely. your engine uh, functions so you might as well put in uh, traction control and that's what they've done so you've got i think you've got a road mode and a rain mode i think maybe the higher spec models will have more modes hmm. to play with but this is what you get uh, with this bike and it, it's great yeah it's a, it's still reasonably simple it's a nice a uh, torquey liquid cooled uh, triple cylinder engine you've got uh, traction control you've got this nice price it'll go up against your um, the new monster 797 the kawasaki z900 okay all playing in that uh, same field but triumph has always been uh, a blockbuster seller particularly in this model worldwide yeah so, and you know also triumph because having known a lot of people who own triumphs they say that the service is so good yeah and triumph is known for you know being very reasonable in terms of 
spares and stuff like that in that bracket sure yeah. yeah so that really plays a big role because triumph i think under vimal has done a very good job in this regard mm-hmm. vimal has actually ensured that they've put a lot of emphasis on stuff like this yeah so it i think it, this is where they get the blockbuster with most of the bikes that they sell vimal if he's listening to this he'll be so happy no no but that is <laughs> that is true <laughs> So, because I've spoken to him extensively about this. Oh, so, more shout-outs. What a matter. Absolute shout-outs. Be sharam, isn't it? Be sharam ka sawar nahi hai. You give credit where it's due. <laughs> credit where it's due. Okay, we'll call yeah. it that. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, the Street Triple 765 uh, is out now. Eight is a bike you'd buy? It's... Oh, we've totally forgot about the most important thing, I think. Uh, is what? About the bike. Not the engine, not the traction control, not the ABS, uh, not the price. It's the suspension. Absolutely. The suspension is much improved. Hmm. Uh, what they use in front is show us separate function forks. Hmm. Now, what this does is it splits the duty of compression and rebound uh, across uh, the fork legs. So, you get two for the price of one. <laughs> not really. What what this means is basically one fork does only compression duties and the other one does rebound duties. Ah, so, that is two for the price of one. No? Achha, okay, chal, double. <laughs> uh, what that does is that it allows them to essentially get a much more sophisticated okay. feel uh, in the suspension and this is something that I discovered when I was driving uh, riding the Versus 650 which is the same sort of shock okay. um, same sort of fork that it makes a huge huge difference to the way the bike rides you know it's it's all very well to sell bikes based on the horsepower they make you can sell a bike which has 200 horsepower but if it has shit suspension and shit, shit tires you're going to go 40 kilometers per hour and splendors are going to overtake you. It Power is nothing without the ability to harness it and put it down on the street. So, I would say that Triumph has got this package very right in all the bikes they've been launching lately. Because whatever they've been launching and doing, I think they're doing a very, very good job and they're catering to almost most of the enthusiast class. Yeah. Full credit to Mr. Sumbli? Absolutely. Yeah. Vimal? Shout Vimal, out. Vimal, Siddharth, everybody on the team. Kya baat hai. Shout out to Vimal. Yeah, again. but the, the team has been together for a long time now. You know what? Triumph, they had an abortive attempt uh, to enter India hmm. and they waited a couple of years. They came back in. Hmm. But now they've sorted themselves. I mean, there's Triumph showroom everywhere yeah. you need one to be. And like you said, the space and service scene is sort of sorted. And I believe uh, uh, they're still doing CKD. And I think these yeah. bikes, the 765, uh, will be CKD assembled uh, in India. So generally, CKD bikes tend to have a, a yeah. better scene as far as spares and all that are concerned. So that's also sorted. We hope that they'll bring the uh, R and RS uh, version into India as well. Okay. Because for this sort of price, I think there might be buyers for that as well. Absolutely, there'll be buyers. And so I think, would you buy the bike? I probably would. Yeah, I would too. So I think on this note... Hmm. We'll take out few more crores from few the more crores. from the podcast revenues. Absolutely, we won't need uh, crores. We'll take out one. We'll take out one. Okay, we'll buy a couple of bikes, go for a vacation, and then come back, mm, eat some salad. Okay, that's it for today. We are Rotom Outing on Facebook and Twitter. Like our page, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to the podcast on the IBM app or any other podcast app. We'll catch you next week. Okay. Excuse me, Bhaiya. Excuse me. Bole, madam. Menu me kya hai? Menu me seen and seen hai. Podcast hai, on course hai, Cyrus hai, Mare in India, Rediscovery Project, Empowering Series, Sex Vex hai, IBM Likes hai, Simplified hai, Keeping It Queer hai, Things and Destinations hai, My Neighbor Zuckerberg hai, or The Fan Garage hai. Aapko kya chahiye hai? Uh, ek baar repeat kar denge kya? Repeat, repeat nahi karta hum. Aap jao, ibmpodcast.com pe or suno ye sab. Ya fir download karo unka app. Sab aapke ungliyo pe.